This is our second lesson on Chapter 20, DNA Replication and Repair, and we'll be looking at DNA supercoiling and topoisomerases. Remember, the DNA molecule is quite large, even in the case of E. coli, many times longer than the length of the cell itself, and that's illustrated on the upper right here. If we lyse the, bac the bacterial cell and allow the DNA to spill out, as you can see, many times, 1,500 times the length of the cell. And so clearly the DNA has to be packaged into a smaller molecule in order to fit within the cell. Now remember, E. coli is a prokaryote, it has no nucleus, but it still organizes its DNA in the form of a nucleoid, and that's illustrated in the lower left here. So the DNA is supercoiled, we'll define what we mean by that in just a moment, but a, an extra level of structure on coiling the DNA, and then we have anchor proteins to hold those loops in place, and that's illustrated by the green spheres here. So even in an organism as simple as E. coli, thus there's some organization to the DNA in order to create a smaller size molecule. Of course, in the case of the human genome, it's a thousand times larger, and so the degree of organization and packing has to be more sophisticated. So we'll look at just the first level of packaging in this video, and the higher levels of packaging in the, a later video. So let's first define the terms twist and writhe. The twist is the number of helical turns of one strand around the other. In other words, how many times does one strand wrap around the other to form the double helix? So that's the twist or coil. So in our illustration of the top right here of this old phone cord, we have the coil illustrated here at the top. That's the twist, the number of helical turns. We can wrap the coil on top of itself, and that's the writhe, that's the supercoiling, the number of times the double helix crosses over itself. And that's illustrated at the lower portion of our figure here. The supercoil or writhe, the number of times that the double helix wraps over or crosses over the double helix. The linking number is the sum of these two values, the twist plus the writhe, and it represents the amount of tension in the molecule. The more coiling, the more supercoiling, the more tense the DNA molecule, the greater the torsional stress on the molecule. So why is that of importance? First of all, we need to supercoil, as we'll see, in order to package it within the nucleus. But when we start the processes of replication and transcription, we need to separate those two strands. And here's where the tension on the molecule comes into play. And that's illustrated in the lower right here. So in this illustration, we have two strands wrapped around one another. They're being held together. This would represent the twist in the molecule, the coiling in the molecule. As we start to separate those two strands, and that's the bottom of our figure here, we introduce supercoils in advance of that separation fork. So we're increasing the tension, the torsional stress on the molecule. We can only separate those two strands so far, and then the stress is too great, it will not allow us to fully separate those two molecules. So clearly this is going to come into play as we try to separate those DNA strands in order to replicate them or to transcribe them. And so we need to be able to either introduce supercoiling or relax it, as the case may be. Well, how can we supercoil the DNA? Well, just as we saw in the unsupercoiled DNA, one strand wraps around one another either in a right-handed or a left-handed direction. One twist uh, for about 10 bases. Remember, that's the number of times one strand wraps around e one another. And remember, in our own case, our DNA is a right-handed helix. Well, just as we can have right and left-handed helix, helices, we can also supercoil in one direction or another. Positive supercoils are supercoils in the left-handed direction. In this case, the winding is more frequent, so the DNA molecule is overwound, which means it's going to be harder to separate those two strands. And that's part of our figure here at the lower portion of the screen. As you can see in this illustration, we can take the unsupercoiled DNA molecule in the center, we can wrap the coil around the, the double helix over 
another portion of the molecule either in one direction or the other. On the far right we have the case of positive supercoiling and remember this is overwound DNA. I will never give you a figure and ask you if this is positively or negatively supercoiled. You simply have to remember positive supercoils left-handed direction overwound. So if we supercoil in the opposite direction, that's the right-handed direction, that's negative supercoils. Our DNA is negatively supercoiled. The easy way to remember this is we have a right-handed helix and it supercoils in the same direction, in a right-handed direction. Negative supercoils slightly underwound, which means it's going to be easier to separate those DNA strands. And that makes logical sense for the purposes of replication and transcription. We had an electron micrograph at the lower portion of the screen here illustrating the difference between uncoiled and supercoiled DNA. So the un unwound DNA molecule is a closed circular piece of DNA and you can see a very open uh, and the dimensions are quite large for this DNA molecule. However, when we start to supercoil it, so we wrap the coils on top of one another and that's at the uh, an illustration, an example of that is at our red arrow here. It's highly supercoiled, that makes it a smaller molecule. So this is the first level of packing the DNA so that we can make it smaller so as to fit within the size of the nucleus. Well, if we need to either introduce or relieve supercoiling, then we need enzymes that will allow us to do that. And these enzymes are referred to as topoisomerases. They're called this because they're isomerases that change the topology of the DNA. And they do it in one of two ways. Type 1 topoisomerases relieve the stress caused by supercoils. They alter the twist, the number of times the strands wrap around one another they make a single strand break. The easiest way to remember this is type 1, one strand break. They can work on both positive and negative supercoiling and in this case energy is released. We don't have to put any energy in the system to make this happen. So in our figure here on the left we have a, a closed double-stranded DNA molecule and there are five negative supercoils. Topoisomerase 1 would bind to the double helix, it would create a single stranded break, it's going to move the other strand through and then reseal that uh, break and thereby create fewer loops and we have fewer negative supercoiling. So we've relaxed the supercoiling in this way. Type 2 topoisomerases make a double strand break. So type 2, two strand break. And in this process, because of the dynamic nature and the movement of the DNA molecule, it requires energy in the form of ATP hydrolysis. These enzymes also can relieve either, uh, either positive or negative supercoiling, and they do this by altering the writhe or the supercoiling. Here we have illustrated an example from prokaryotic system DNA gyrase that actually introduces supercoiling. So the subunits involved are gyre A and gyre B. They bind to double-stranded DNA. They create a double-stranded break. As you can see, they remain bound to the DNA. They're going to move the double helix through that break, reseal the double helix, the, the double-stranded break, and we've introduced a supercoiling. So this is how prokaryotic systems introduce negative supercoiling in their DNA molecules. Eukaryotes introduce and maintain the negative supercoiling by wrapping the DNA around nucleosome proteins. We'll look at this in a later video. This is the extent to which we will be held responsible for information concerning topoisomerases. There are some interesting videos that are included uh, in the chapter web links for chapter 20, animations on the operation of these topoisomerases, and you might find that instructive and helpful to understand how these processes work. Archaeal topoisomerases increase the linking number. That actually results in positive supercoils. Remember, this means that the DNA is overwound, harder to unwind. So why would you want to make it harder to separate the DNA strands? Archaea are uh, prokaryotic 
organisms that tend to live at extreme conditions, either high pH or high temperature. An example here in our picture is Sulfolobus that's been isolated from Yellowstone. Their cell wall structure allows them to tolerate these extreme conditions and for that reason they're called extremophiles. So you could imagine high pH, high temperature would tend to melt the DNA and so it overwinds the DNA to prevent that from happening. In our next video lesson, we're going to see the general model of DNA replication.